وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على رسول الله سيدنا محمد بن عبد الله واله وصحبه ومن والاه اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واعف عنا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم انا نعوذ بك من ان نقول زورا او نغش فجورا او نكون بك من المغرورين respected sisters brothers welcome to your class يوم القيامه the day of قيامه do you hear me yes she Yes, yes, yes. All right, we reach page 274. Everybody, the Day of Judgment, page 274. What are the principles according to which the people, the humans, the jinn, will be brought to account? On what principle a person will be held accountable before Allah Yawm Al-Qiyamah. It's very important to know. So let's see this subject where we stopped last week. Start with Sister Azura. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The principles according to which the people will be brought to account. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to punish all his creatures, he would not be unjust towards them because they are his slaves and they belong to him. The one who owns something can do whatever he wants with it. But Allah will judge his slaves in a fair and just manner, such as mankind will never have seen before. Our Lord has told us in many texts the principles on which the judgment and reckoning on that day will be based. We will mention as many of these principles as we, as we have come to know. One, perfect justice which is not contaminated by any element of injustice. Allah will pay his slaves in full on the day of resurrection with nothing lacking at all. No person will be treated with the slightest injustice, not even the equivalent of a grain of mustard seed and translated as then every person shall be paid what he earned, and they shall not be dealt with unjustly. Quran 2, 281. Luqman said, telling his son about the justice of Allah, as translated as, O oh my son, if it be anything equal to the weight of a, of a grain of mustard seed, and though it be in a rock, or in the heavens, or in the earth, Allah will bring it forth. Verily, Allah is subtle in bringing out that grain, well aware of its place. Quran 31.16 Elsewhere, Allah says, as translated, Surely Allah wrongs not even of the weight of an atom or a small ant. As translated, the hereafter is far better for him who, fear Allah's, who fears Allah. And you shall not be dealt with unjustly even equal to the fatila a scalish track in the long slit of a dead stone. And whoever does righteous good deeds, male or female, and is a true believer in the oneness of Allah, Muslim, such will enter paradise and not the least injustice, even to the size of a nakira, speck on the back of a dead stone, will be done to them. And Allah says, so who whosoever does equal good equal to the weight of an atom or a small ant shall see it. And whosoever does evil equal to the weight of an atom or a small ant shall see it. In these verses, Allah tells us that he will requit every person for his actions and that nothing will be lost and not even the smallest amount will be lacking. The word used in Arabic is dara translated as an atom or a small ant, which refers to the tiny particles which can be seen in a ray of sunlight when it enters a small aperture. Not even a fatil or a nakir of injustice will be done. 
The fatil is the thread which is found in the groove of a dead stone. And the nakir is a small dent in the back of a dead stone. Very good. Number one principle on which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hand us accountable is justice and nothing but justice. You, you need to know this. In this dunya, there is so much injustice and you are afraid, even when you go to court, you are afraid that the judge may, may wrong you, but not with Allah. So the first principle on Yawm al Qiyamah is justice. Not even an atom, Allah will not even wrong you with an atom. If you have done an atom of good, he will give it to you. If you have done an atom of evil, he will show it to you. So as little as an atom of good deed or bad deed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not wrong you. So that's number one. Number two, no one will be responsible for the sin of another. Ahmed will not be responsible for the mistakes and the sins and the shortcomings of Fatima. Azura will not be responsible for Ramlan. Mazlan will not be accountable for the mistakes of his father or mother or son or daughter. That's the next principle. Let's go with Sister Shariza. Next principle. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. No one, will, no one will be responsible for the sin of another. The principle of reckoning and requital, which represents the utmost justice, is that Allah will requite his slaves for their actions. If they are good, then the consequences will be good. And if they are bad, then the consequences will be bad. Allah will not make anyone bear the burden of his sins of another, as he Taala says, as translated as, no person earns any sin except against himself only, and no bearer of burdens shall bear the burden of another. Then unto your Lord is your return, so he will tell you that wherein you have been deferring. Quran 6, um, Ayat 164. This is the ultimate justice and fairness. The one who is guided will reap the benefits of his guidance, and the one who is misguided will have no one to blame but, to blame but himself. As translated in the Quran, whoever goes right, then he goes right only for the benefit of his own self. And whoever goes astray, then he goes astray to his own loss. No one laden with burdens can bear another's burden. And we never punish until we have sent a messenger to give warning. Quran 17, Ayat 15. This principle is one of the matters on which all the divinely revealed laws say the same thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as translated, Or is he not informed with what is in the pages, scripture of Musa, and of Ibrahim, who fulfilled or conveyed all that Allah ordered him to do or convey, that no burdened person with sins shall bear the burden of another, and that man can have nothing but what he does, good or bad, and that his deeds will be seen. Then he will be recompensed with the full and the best recompense. Quran 53, Ayat 36, 41. Qurtubi said in his tafsir of the ayah, as translated, and no bearer of burdens shall bear the burden of another. Quran 6, Ayat 6, 164. This means that no one who is carrying a burden will bear the burden of another, and no soul will be taken to task for the sins of another. Each soul will be brought to account for its own sins and will have to bear the consequences of its own evil doing. The root of the word wizr, translated as burden, i.e. of sin, means something heavy, such as when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as translated, and remove from you your burden, wizrak. Here, however, the meaning is sin. This ayah was revealed concerning Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira, who used to say, follow my way and I will carry your burdens. Yani sin. This was mentioned by Ibn Abbas. It was also said that it is revealed to refute the Arabs of the Jahiliyyah, who believe that a man could be responsible for the burden of his father and son or the mistakes of his allies. Those who will bear other loads besides their own, 
some people may disagree with the idea that no person will carry the sins of another by quoting the verses as translated. And verily, they shall bear their own loads and other loads besides their own. Quran 29, ayat 13. As translated also, that they may bear their own burdens in full on the day of resurrection and also of the burdens of those whom they misled without knowledge. Quran 16, ayat 25. What they quote is in accordance with the text that we have mentioned. It does not contradict them at all. These texts indicate that a person will bear the burden of the sins that he commits, as well as the sins of those whom he misguides by his words and deeds, just as those who call people to true guidance will receive the reward for what they do as well as the like of the reward of those who follow their guidance and benefit from their knowledge. So the fact that those misguided people misguide others is an action on their part for which they will have to face the consequences. Very good. The second principle of judgment, Yawm al qiyamah is that no one is responsible for the sins of others. Unless you misguide them. If you misguide someone, he will go to hell and you go to hell because you misguided him and he followed you. But that doesn't mean you take the burden out of him. He is safe and you go to hell. No. Same thing. If you guide someone, if you teach something nice, if you do da'wah, if you help someone to return to Allah, he will go to Jannah and you will go to Jannah. Oh, I see. So, the idea that no one is off the hook, for example, for example, what is meant by this is this. Someone follows someone to do evil. He can't tell Allah, oh Allah, I followed him. He goes to hell, not me. He misguided me. Allah says, both of you. He for misguiding you and you for following him. You, you understand? But it's not like I'm off the hook if I follow someone doing Bid'a or shirk or uh, zina or a major sin. Allah will hold that person responsible and whoever misguided him. As well as Allah will reward you and whoever guided you or was a reason for you to be guided. I see. So, but, but, but someone goes to hell, the other one doesn't go because he mis misled me, doesn't work. Allah says, you will be responsible for your own sin. Meaning accountability is personal on you. You have to be careful who to follow and who to, what to say and what to do and etc. Is this clear, inshallah? Any question here so far about the first two principles? Justice and that no soul will carry the burden of sins from another one. Everyone is accountable for himself or herself. And if you do good, you're going to find good. You do evil, you're going to find evil. Any questions so far? Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum. Sheikh, what about uh, uh, people who are giving fatwa about certain things? You know, then they say, we, our health, we, when we study certain things, we think it's wrong, but there's a fatwa available saying that it's okay, you know, you can do this. Uh, you can deal with riba, no problem. There's a fatwa available. So we follow the fatwa or we follow the knowledge that we no, have? No, no, no. Okay. The Prophet ﷺ said, Istafti qalbak. Follow your heart even if people give you fatwa. Even if people give you fatwa. You should also ask your heart, am I okay with this fatwa or not? People tell me riba is haram. As a Muslim, I don't know riba is haram. I am that jahil that riba is haram. So I still have to watch what people say to me. So if someone give me fatwa that it's okay to kill myself because I'm in pain, somebody tells you, in this case, in this cancer, in this COVID, in this whatever situation you are facing, it's okay to terminate yourself. You need unithasia or throw yourself from a building. No, I need to still know what is right, what is wrong. Ah, genuinely, I make ishtihad. I try to find a solution for a problem. And I give the best of my knowledge and I was wrong. 
That's fine, but not in Akida. In, somebody asked me a question and I did my level best to answer him. But Yom al Qiyamah, I was wrong. Then Allah will still give me one reward. I'm talking about misguidance. You're going to hell. You're not going, it's not a small thing. It's either paradise or hell. So you still have to ask again. You cannot just blindly follow anyone. So, Yawm al Qiyamah, on the Day of Judgment, Allah will hold you responsible for what you have done personally, personally. What you have said, what you have done. So, you have to be careful what to do, what to say. Clear? Let's see number three. Brother Dr. Husni, showing the people the deeds that they had sent forth. Allah will show you. All of them. It's your right. It's your right standing in the court of Allah. All the things you have done, good and bad. It's your right to, so that nobody is lying against you or accusing you or adding or minusing. It's your right. Go on, let's see. Thank you, Sheikh. Yeah. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Showing the people the deeds that they had sent forth. One of the ways in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will leave his creation with no excuses and will manifest his justice is that he will show them what they had sent forth of both righteous deeds and evil deeds so that they may pass judgments on themselves and then they will have no excuse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the return of you all is to Allah then he will inform you about all that which you used to do. On the day when every person will be confronted with all the good he has done and all the evil he has done, he will wish that there were a great distance between him and his evil. The next translation is, uh, then a person will know what he has sent forward and what he has left behind of good or bad deeds. And they will find and all that they did placed before them and your Lord treats no one with injustice. The way in which the people will be shown what they have sent forth of deeds, which will be by means of their being given the books of their deeds, which they will read. Our Lord has told us that he has appointed two angels to each one of us to record our righteous and evil deeds. When a person dies, a seal is placed on his book. And when the day of resurrection comes, each person will be given his book and will be told, read your book. You are sufficient as a reckoner against yourself this day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we have fastened every man's deeds to his neck. And on the day of resurrection, we shall bring out for him a book which he will find wide open. It will be said to him, read your book. You yourself are sufficient as a reckoner against you this day. This is a book which includes all of a person's deeds, great and small alike. And the book, one's record will be placed in the right hand for a believer in the oneness of Allah and in the left hand for a disbeliever in the oneness of Allah. And you will see the Mujrimun criminals, polities, sinners, fearful of that which is recorded therein. They will say, woe to us. What sort of book is this that leaves neither a small thing nor a big thing, but has recorded it with numbers? And they will find all that they did placed before them, and your Lord treats no one with injustice. Very good. You heard many ayahs read right now, just now about this principle, the third principle of judgment, Yawm al -Qiyam. How does Allah judge? Number one, the principle of justice. There is not a single atom of injustice. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make no one responsible for the sins of others. You are responsible for your sins. Okay? 
Number three is Allah will show you all your deeds. He will, you have the right to see everything against you and everything for you in your favor or in against you. That's your right. And Allah promised. So when we die, sisters and brothers, there is a book now, as I speak, Zubair's book. Malaika are writing every good I do and every bad I do. When I die, they will seal the book. Look at me. They seal it. They make a seal and put it aside. Yawm al qiyamah, Allah will give me my book. Inshallah, with my rights. And say, read your book. Enough for you to be the judge for yourself. Read your book. These are the good deeds you did. These are the bad deeds you did. Every human being. That's the third principle. Wow. I need to know this. Even courts today, they don't do it. They don't they throw, just throw maybe the charges against you and that's it. Yom al Qiyamah, Allah shows you even the good you did. Today's uh, uh, courts, they uh, only the accusation, whatever you are accused with, the good I do, no, they don't mention. Wow. So that, that's not fair already. You see how fair Allah is? Even the good deeds he will show you. The bad deeds he will show you. You have the right to see what you have done, to be reminded of your life. That's principle number Three. Now, number four. Thank you, Brother Husni. Now, Sister Zurina, go ahead. Bismillah. Number four. Multiplication of hasanat, good deeds, but not of sayat, bad deeds. <clears throat> it is one aspect of Allah's mercy that He multiplies the reward for righteous deeds. As translated, if you lend to Allah a goodly loan that is spent in Allah's cause, he will double it for you and will forgive you. The least amount by which the hasana will be multiplied is 10. As translated, whoever brings a good deed, Islamic monotheism and deeds of, and, and deeds of obedience to Allah and his messenger shall have 10 times the light thereof to his credit. To his credit. Quran 6, Ayah 160. But the recompense for Sha'ia, a bad deed, was simply be one. For, for Sha'ia. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the recompense for Sha'ia is a bad ah. Sha'ia. <laughs> correct, 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 correct. correct. Uh, a bad deed will simply be one like it, as translated. And whoever brings an evil deed, politism, disbelief, hypocrisy, and deeds of disobedience to Allah and his messenger shall have only the recompense of the light thereof. Uh, Quran 6, Ayah 160. This is indicative of his justice. May he be exalted. It is narrated by Al-Hakim in his Mustadrak and by Ahmad in his Musnad with a say is not that Abu Dhar Radjallahu Anhu said, the trusted truthful, that is the last Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, told us that his Lord yes. told him, the Hasana is for ten, like it or more, and the Sayyidah is one, or I will forgive it. And if you meet me with sins nearly as great as the earth, so long as you did not associate anything in worship with me, I will meet you with forgiveness, nearly as great as the earth. Among the actions from which the Messenger وسلم, has told us that the reward will be multiplied 10 times is reading Quran. According to the hadith narrated by Tirmizi and Ad Darimi with a sahih isnat from Ibn Mas'ud, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Whoever reads one letter of the book of Allah will have one hasana for it, and each hasana will be rewarded tenfold. I do not say that alif lam mim is one letter. Alif is a letter 
Lam is a letter and Mim is a letter. Kamizi oh, okay. This is a sign. Uh, stop that. Wait, sister. Another great principle of Allah Azza wa Jal in judging us Yawm al Qiyamah is that, is that, and this is absolutely His mercy. Our good deeds will be multiplied and our bad deeds will be mentioned exactly as we did them. No multiplication. Every good deed you have done, the minimum, the minimum will be 10. Meaning there are those who get more than 10. Every good deed you have done is time 10. For example, and this is the best way to do pahala, is reading the Quran. That's why sisters and brothers, those who don't read the Quran, do you know how much injustice you are doing to yourselves? Because for every alphabet, Allah gives you 10 pahala. So if you say, Bismi, Bismi, 30 pahala. Bismillahi, 70 pahala. Bismillahi rahman rahim already 150, 200. Already just, you didn't even start it in the Quran, you already have 200 pahala. So one page, average 6,000. Two pages, 12,000. 12,000 pahala per day. This is only when you read two pages of the Quran. Reciting, it's not tafsir, tafsir even more. You are just reading. You are doing nothing. You are sitting in your room or in your house or in your car and you are reading some Quran, one page or two. Allahu Akbar. So you see how much pahala you are missing? So one of the best ways to have pahala and it doesn't cost any physical effort or money, financial effort, or just read, open the Mus'haf and read. Read, iqra. No wonder why the first command of Allah, the first word of the Quran was iqra. Recite, read. So, this is very important fact to know, that our pahala will be multiplied, yawm al qiyamah and our evil deeds will not be multiplied. Isn't this more than justice? This is Rahmah. So the people who find themselves going to hell, what does that mean? With one good deed, you have 10. And with one bad deed, you have only one. What does it mean? What does it mean, my sisters and brothers? It means you do 10 times more bad deeds than good deeds. It means you are really evil. Yes, very good. It means you are doing 10 times evil than the good. That's why you end up in hellfire. Now to be land. Some people are just at that. Okay? So that's scary. If Allah for one good deed, he's going to give you 10 and you found yourself in hellfire, na'udhu billah. Yeah? So look at the next hadith. Continue, sister. Okay. Termizi said, this is a Sahih Hassan hadith whose is not is garib. garib. Our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has also told us that zikir will be rewarded tenfold. In the sunans of Termizi, Nasai and Abu Dawood, it narrated from Abdullah ibn Amar ibn al-As, may Allah be pleased with them both, that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there are two characteristics which no Muslim attains but will enter paradise. They are easy and those who do them are few. Glorifying Allah, saying, Subhanallah, after every prayer 10 times and praising him, saying, Alhamdulillah, 10 times and magnifying him, saying, Allahu Akbar, 10 times. I saw the message of Allah Wasallam counting them on his hand. He said, that is 150 on the tongue and 1,500 in the balance. And when you go to bed, glorify him and magnify him and praise him 100 times. That will be 100 on the tongue 
and 1,000 in the balance. Who among you does 1,500 sari'at in one day? They said, how should we not count it? He said, the shaitan comes to one of you while he is praying and says, remember such and such, remember such and such, until he finishes his prayer. Then he may not recite the zikir, or he, the shaitan, comes to him while he is lying in bed and does not leave him until he makes him fall asleep. This is narrated by Tamizi and Asaid. Allahu Akbar. The second thing that makes you gain so much pahala beside the Quran is dhikr. So re recite Quran for every alphabet. You have that pahala and the dhikr. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, many times. Saying the Prophet said, you say is 150 on the tongue, but is 1,500 on your scale. Huh? If I say 150 times, or 100, let's say I say 100, la ilaha illallah. In my scale of good deeds is 1,000. Wow. And I, yet you find people not saying anything. No dhikr. Or less dhikr. Must do a lot of dhikr, especially after salat. Okay? So that's another form of being safe yom al qiyamah. Being safe yom And dhikr, no physical or financial effort. Just your time. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah said, Yawm al qiyamah if there is any uh, bad feeling a believer will feel, is the fact when he sees the pahala of, of, of dhikr. And he says, why? Why I was not making uh, a lot of dhikr? God would have given me more mountains of pahala. One, one thing we will regret deeply on the day of judgment is the fact that we were not doing the dhikr. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allah. The fact that you are not reciting the Quran a lot. Yes, we regret that because a lot of pahala in easy way. You are not, you are busy watching TV or window shopping or high tea, low tea, Malaysia Harimau, watching. Uh, Whatever. Yeah? Okay. Continue, sister. Okay. According to a report narrated by Abu Dawood, after he so long ahead, sit in the balance. Can you hear me, Shay? In the yeah, balance, the I first time he said, and magnify him, say Allahu Akbar 34 times when you go to bed and pray. Praise him, say Alhamdulillah 33 times, and glorify him, say Subhanallah 33 times. That is 100 on the tongue and 1,000 in the balance. I saw the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, counting them on his hand. They said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, how come are they easy? And how come those do them are so few? He said, The shaitan comes to one of you when he is going to sleep and makes him sleep before he can say them. And he comes to him when he is praying and reminds him of his affair before he can say them. Mm. Our messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us in the Hadith of the Isra, narrated by Bukhari and others, and, uh, and others about how he went back and forth between his lot and Musa. When each time Musa told him to go back to his lot, and asked him to reduce the number of prayers required until they became five instead of 50. At the end of that, he وسلم, said, my word does not change as it is enjoined upon you. Ah, in no, sorry, Islam. sorry. And, and at the end, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah. said. Okay. Mm. At the end of that, he, subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, my word does not change as it is enjoined upon you in Umul al-Khitab. 
every hasana will have the reward of 10 like it. So there are 50 in Um Al Khitab and five enjoined upon you. So he went back to Musa, who said, What did you do? He said, It is reduced for us. And for every hasana, we will be given the reward of 10 like it. Or they may be multiplied more than that to a level of 700 or even more. An example of that is the reward of the one who spends for the sake of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the likeness of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is as the likeness of a grain of corn. It grows seven years, and each year has a hundred grains. Allah gives manifold increase to whom he wills, and Allah is all sufficient, for his creatures needs all knower. Ibn Khatir said, Hazir Khatir said, This is an example of the generosity of Allah, as he multiplies the reward of those who spend for his sake, seeking his pleasure. The hasana will be multiplied between 10 and 700 times. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the likeness of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah, Quran 2, ayah 261, Said ibn Jubair said, this means in obedience to Allah. Mahur said, this means spending in jihad buying sticks of war and preparing weapons, etc. It was narrated from Ibn Abbas that Jihad and Hajj multiply the dirhams spent on them by 700. In this tafsir, in his tafsir of the ayah, Ibn Khasir, Khasir mentioned the hadith narrated by Muslim, Nasai and Ahmad from Abdullah Ibn Mas'ud. It states that a man gave a halted camel in charity for the sake of Allah. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "It will be brought forth on the day of resurrection with seven hundred other halted camels." Very good. This is the version. There is another multiplication. There is hold on. There is another multiplication. So the minimum is ten. There is multiplication, but that's the minimum. There is another multiplication that goes even to 700. Whatever good did you do is 700. What is that? Infaq, sadaqah, zakat, donating. The ulama differ. Is it donating for anything or specifically for jihad? The super majority of ulama said anything, including jihad. The Allah Azza wa Jal, for those who donate, for those who spend money for Allah's sake, their multiplication of their deeds is not just 10, 10, it's 700. And the ayah is in front of you from Surah Al-Baqarah, of course, ayah 261. Okay? So that, just for you to know. So there are many good deeds we can do now. Yawm al qiyamah when we stand before Allah in the court, we'll be okay because we have multiplication. We might not have done many good deeds, but we did quality good deeds. We recited the Quran. You know, some people, for example, all their life Muslims, but they meet Allah with less pahala than a brother or sister who just embraced Islam last year. But that brother in that last year of his life, he has done many quality good deeds. He was sadaqah, sadaqah, sadaqah. He was umrah, he was... He was attending classes. He was reading Quran a lot. He was dhikr. Ah, see. So it's not how many years we have been Muslims. More than what good deeds, what quality of the deeds we have done. Especially, in fact, a lot of people when it comes to donating, because it's related to the desire of shahwa, desire of of owning. Oh, I see. That is why Allah said, in fact, مثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله في سبيل الله for Allah's sake. Okay, continue please. This is the version narrated by Ahmad and Nasai. The version narrated by Muslim says, 
a man brought a halted camel and said, O oh, messenger of Allah, this is for the sake of Allah. He, he sallallahu alaihi wa sallam said, for this you will have 700 camels on the day of resurrection. Uh, he gave it lead jihad. A man had only one camel. He said, yeah, oh Allah, oh messenger of Allah, oh Allah's messenger, I am giving this camel for the sake of Allah for jihad. A mujahid will use it. The Prophet wasallam said, may Allah give you 700 yom al -qiyam. For this, the 700 are already waiting for you. Wow. So imagine this man had only one camel. He brought his camel and said, I would like to give it for a Muslim fighter who will fight for Allah's sake. Allahu Akbar. Yes. So it's not only money and cash. Anything that will be used for Allah's sake. Continue. Among the actions will be multiplied beyond measure to an extent known only to the one who gives the reward. Is fasting. Mm. Is fasting. According to the hadith narrated by Bukhari, Muslim and Ahmad from Abu Hurairah, Riyadullah Anhu, the Prophet Wasallam said, every good deed of the son of Adam will be multiplied between 10 and 700 times. But Allah says, except for fasting, because it is for me and I will give the reward for it. The reason why the one who fasts will be given reward without measure is that fasting requires sabar, patience. And those who are patient will be given reward without measure. Allah SWT says, as translated, only those who are patient shall receive their reward in full, without reckoning. Qurtubi said, the scholar said, every reward will be measured and weighed out except the reward for fasting we should be poured out and heat up. Mm. Patient includes patient in the face of disasters, grief and distress in this world, by means of which Allah tests his lips. As translated, and certainly we shall test you with something of fear, hunger, loss of love, lives and fruits, but give glad tidings to Asabirun, the patient, who when afflicted with calamity say, truly to Allah we belong and truly to him we shall return. They are those on whom are the salawat, that is, who are blessed and will be forgiven from their lot. And they are those who receive his mercy, and is they who are guided, the guided ones. Very good. The other great uh, action we, we do, Yom al Qiyama, will bring us so much pahala, is fasting. And since uh, the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are coming, my sisters and brothers. Dhul Hijjah. Dhul Hijjah is coming, right? Before Eid, from the 1st of July until the 10th of July is the first 10 days. These 10 days are the best 10 days you can do anything in. Anything you do is multiplied more than 10, more than 700, more than anything. Anything you do. Sheikh, can we fast? If you want to fast, fast. It's not wajib, but if you want to fast, fast. Sadaqa, visiting the graveyard, visiting the loved one, Salatul Rahim, speaking the truth, speaking against injustice, standing against people who oppress you. Anything you do in these 10 days that are coming, they are the, there is nothing equ equivalent to them. So here, the 10 days are coming, don't miss them. Have a plan what to do. And what's the best thing you ever do? Salat on time. There is no point. You do, I don't know what, why do you miss Salat? In these 10 days that are coming. So I just wanted to take the opportunity to remind you. One of the best deeds we can do that multiply our good deeds beside reciting the Quran, dhikr, and sadaqah is fasting. You know, only Allah knows the reward of fasting. He doesn't want to tell. Allah says, my slave fasted for me. And only that person was fasting. For example, somebody is fasting today. Somebody fasted today. We didn't know if he was fasting or not. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yom al-Qiyamah, will give him reward without 
counting. Countless. Wow. So, including Ramadan, including whatever, six days of Shawwal, Dhul uh, Hijjah, Arafah coming, inshallah, Muharram also after Arafah. These days shouldn't be missed. MashaAllah. Okay? Continue, sister. When the people who were saved from disasters in this world see how great is the reward of the patient, they will wish that their skins would have been torn with iron combs so that they might have attained the reward of the patient. In Sunan At-Tirmizi, it is narrated from Jabir and in Mukjam At-Tabarani, Mukjam At-Tabarani, it is narrated with a Hassan Isnat from Ibn Abbas that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi blessing and peace be upon him said the people who were saved in this world will wish on the day of resurrection that their skins would have been torn with iron combs when they see the reward of the people who suffered trials another aspect of Allah's bounty is that when the believer intends to do a good action but does not do it it is recorded for him as one complete hasana if he intends to do an evil action, he does not do it because he fears Allah, then it will be recorded for him as one complete hasana. In Sahih Bukhari, it is narrated from Ibn Abbas, Riyadhul Anhu, that the Prophet wasallam said, narrating about his lot. Allah ordered the appointed recording angels to write down both good deeds, hasanat and bad deeds, sayyiat. Then he explained how that was to be done. Whoever resolved to do a good deed but does not do it, Allah will record it with him as one complete hasana. If he resolved to do it and does do it, then Allah will record it with him as between 10 and 700 hasana or many more. Whoever resolves to do a bad deed and does not do it, Allah will record it with him as one complete hasana. If he resolve to do it and do it, Allah will record it for him as one sayyah. Exchanging sayyah for hasanah. The mercy and bounty of Allah towards his slave will reach such an extent that he will exchange their sayyah for hasanah. In the hadith narrated by Muslim in his sayyah from Abu Dar. Uh, no, Sister uh, Nazaria, uh, she, uh, she left the she left because he said in the WhatsApp that his house black up. Oh, okay, okay, I got you because I thought I'm the only one can't hear you. So sorry, Sister Nazaria. <laughs> I thought I was so, reading to so myself. We just, <laughs> no. we just hold yeah, on. So, yeah, yeah, I, I'm not sure, but wait till this person notices. Eh? Yeah, okay.
Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Alhamdulillah, we are back. But uh, actually, I want just to stop right here. But I, I really thank Allah then those who waited. Uh, mashallah. I don't know the whole uh, neighborhood. Um, I will stop here. I will stop here. But I would just to summarize quickly the last thing we did is how to increase in a quality way, quality way, our good deeds. Recitation of Quran, a lot of dhikr, sadaqat, regular sadaqat, and mashallah, fasting. We continue talking about the rest of the things, the principles, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge us Yawm al -Qiyamah, and how he will judge us. May Allah bless you all. So we're going to stop at number five. So let sister uh, uh, Zurina finish and we stop at number five, which is page 289. Continue sister. We are in page 288 everyone. Continue. Okay, Shay. It's changing shayat for hasanat. The mercy and bounty of Allah towards his slave will reach such an extent that he will exchange their sayyat for hasanat. In the hadith narrated by Muslim in his sahih from Abu Dhar, he says, The Messenger of Allah, so the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, I know the last of the people of paradise to enter paradise, and the last of the people of hell to emerge from the fire. It will be a man who will be, who will be brought forth on the day of resurrection. And it will be said, show him the least of his sins. It will be said to him, did you not do such and such on such a day? He will say yes. He will not be able to deny it. And he will be scared that his major sins will also be shown to him. Then he will be, then he, then it will be said to him, in the place of every sayyah, you have a hasana. Hasana. He will say, my Lord, I did things that I do not see here. And I saw the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa smiling so broadly that his eye teeth could be seen. 